Okay, so now we will divide. We'll divide in other bases. All right, so what I want to do is I want to divide 134 base 5, and I want to divide that by 4 base 5. So I want to divide that by 4 base 5. So 134 base 5 divided by 4 base 5. I'm going to do this division. In order to do this division, I have to know the multiplication table for base 5. Actually, I really only have to know my 4 times tables base 5. So I'm going to start, well, 4 base 5 times 0 base 5 is still 0. 4 base 5 times 1 base 5 is still 4. 4 base 5 times 2 base 5 is equal to, well, 4 times 2 in our base, base 10, is actually 8. So we need to convert that, ace ba eight, that 8 base 10 into a base 5 number. So we need to know how many groups of 5 there are in 8. Well, there's one group of 5 in 8, and the remainder when you divide 8 by 5 is 3. So the number we think of as 8, the number we think of as 8 is actually 13 base 5. So 4 times 2 is 8 base 10, but 4 base 5 times 2 base 5 is actually 13 base 5, because you have to take that 8 and convert it to a base 5 number. 4 base 5 times 3 base 5. Well, if we do this multiplication base 10, we get 12. But we don't, we're not in a base 10 system, so we have to convert that 12 to base 5. Well, let me see. There are two groups of 5 in 12 with a remainder of 2. So let's see. What we think of as 12 base 10 is actually 22 base 5. And we have 4 base 5 times 4 base 5 now. Well, 4, ba four times 4 in base 10 is 16. That number 16 needs to be converted to base 5. Well, there are three groups of 5 in 16, and one is the remainder. So 16 base 10 is actually 31 base 5. And that's all we need because the base is 5, so we cannot use the numeral that we usually think of as the number 5. These are the only numerals, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right, so there's the multiplication table base 5. So what we're going to do is first we're going to say, well, how many times does 4 go into 1? 4 doesn't go into 1, so technically I should write a 0 up there, but it's a leading 0, so unnecessary. Then we have to say, how, well, how many times does 4 go into 13? Well, 4 goes into 13, if you look right here, 4 base 5 times 2 base 5 is exactly 13 base 5. So the number of times that 4 goes into 13 in a base 5 system is exactly twice. So I put a 2 above the 3, and I multiply 2 times 4, which is actually 13. 13, and then I subtract. I get 0. So I bring down the next digit, which is a 4. So now I need to see how many times 4 base 5 goes into 4 base 5. And 4 base 5 goes into 4 base 5 exactly one time. So the next numeral is a 1. And 1 times 4 is 4, and I subtract, and I get no remainder. The remainder is 0. So it turns out that 134 base 5 divided by 4 base 5 oops, is 21 base 5. 21 base 5. So we've done our first base 5 division. Let's do another one. Might as well keep that up there since the next example I'm going to give is also base 5. Now if you're working in another base, you need to make a multiplication table for that base. The only reason I'm using this multiplication table is because that problem was with numerals that are base 5. But if I was trying to do the problem in a different base, this multiplication table would be completely different. So let's do this division. Let's do uh, 342 base 5 
divided by three. Uh, let's say let's say four again, base five. So I'm dividing three hundred and forty-two base five by four base five. Well, let's see. Four once again doesn't go into three. Four doesn't go into three. So I see how many times four goes into thirty-four. Well, looking at this list, if I go down, the largest number I see that's still smaller than 34 is actually 31. So it turns out that 4 base 5 goes into 34 base 5 4 times. So I put a 4 up here. 4 base 5 times 4 base 5 is 31 base 5. And I do this subtraction. I do this subtraction and I get 3. So I bring down the next digit. And now I need to see how many times 4 base 5 goes into 32 base 5. Well, once again, the largest number on this list that's still smaller than 32 is still 31. So that goes in 4 times also. 4 times 4 once again is 31. I subtract. And I get 1. Well, there's nothing else to bring down. so. Like we did in grade school, we have the answer here is the quotient is 44 base 5, but there's a remainder. The remainder, we're going to use a big R, the remainder is equal to 1 base 5. So that's an example with a remainder. That's how we're going to deal with the remainder. We just put big R for remainder, and we put what the remainder is. All right, one more. Okay, so let's try 100 and or 1,100 or 1,300 and let's say uh, 21 base 5 divided by 3 base 5. So since I'm dividing by 3 base 5, I'm going to make another list here because I need to know my 3 times tables base 5. Well, 3 base 5 times uh, 0 base 5 is still 0 base 5. 3 base 5 times 1 base 5 is 3 base 5. Uh, 3 base 5 times 2 base 5 is 6 base 5. Well, 6 base 5 is actually, well, how many groups of 5 are there in 6? 1. And what's the remainder? 1. So 6 base 5 is actually, or 6 base 10 is actually 11 base 5. 6 base 10 is actually 11 base 5. So then 3 base 5 times 3 base 5. Well, let's see. That's 9 in base 10. Base 5, let's see. One group of 5 in 9, and the remainder would be 4. So it turns out that 9 base 10 is actually 14 base 5. And then lastly, we need to know 3 base 5 times 4 base 5. You only go up to 1 less than the base. So let's see, that would be 12 in a base 10 system. But 12 base 10, well let me see. There are 2 groups of 5 in 12, and the remainder is 2. So 12 base 10 is actually 22 base 5. So that's what I need in order to do this division. Well let me see. The first thing I want to do, does 3 go into 1? No, 1 is too small for 3 to go into. So 3 goes into 13. Well, in order to find out how many times 3 goes into 13, I need to find the largest number on this list that is still smaller than 13. 14 is too big, but 11 is perfect. 11 is smaller than 13, and it's the largest number on that list that is still smaller than 13. So I'm going to say that uh, 3 base 5 goes into 13 base 5 twice. So I recorded 2 up here. And then I know 2 base 5 times 3 base 5 is actually 11 base 5. So I record the 11 base 5 down here. Then I'm going to subtract. OK, so subtraction. Let me see. This is going to be a 2. And I bring down the next digit, which is also a 2. So now I'm going again to this list to find the largest number that is still smaller than, or equal to actually, this number right here, 22. And actually, down here I see that 3 base 5 times 4 base 5 is exactly 22 base 5. 
So the number of times that 3 base 5 goes into 22 base 5 is 4. So I record the 4 up here. 4 base 5 times 3 base 5 is exactly 22 base 5. So I put the 22 down here and I subtract. I get 0. And I bring down the next digit, which is a 1. Well, let me see. How many times does 3 base 5 go into 1 base 5? It does not at all. 0 times. Because the, if you look at this list, the largest number on this list that's less than or equal to 1 is 0. 3 is too big. So the number of times that it goes in is 0. So I record a 0 up here. If you don't record that 0, you have the wrong number of decimal places. So, or the wrong, num the wrong place value. So we bring this down. And let's see. 0 times 3 is 0. We subtract and we get 1. So that's my remainder. So 3 base 5 goes into 1,321 base 5. 240 base 5 with a remainder of 1 base 5. So this would be the answer for that particular problem.